I want to go over bands and counter bands at the walk. I'm on try here. He's a four-year-old quarter horse and we're just coming along. He's been a real skittish horse, so it's taken quite a while just to get him relaxed and comfortable with me being up on his back. And we've been working a lot and just getting a real nice rhythm going. So I feel like that's going pretty good. And now it's time to lead into the bends at the walk. We just did some starting off at the halt. And you always want to make sure you have that. But once you have that, can you take your flexions into the walk? First into the walk, then trot, then the canter as you progress. And I want you to think about the bends. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out bends and counter bends. Think of the bend as always flexed into the center of the arena or into the center of the circle. And your counter bands are bent away from the center of the circle or to the outside of the arena, depending on whether you're riding down the rail or whether you're on a circle. So that's just a reference point of whether you're doing a bend, which is to the inside, counter bend is to the outside. <clears throat> and a good place to start off is just walking down the rail. So I'm gonna head off to the rail and I'm gonna just establish a real nice walk going. It doesn't have to be a fast walk. It just needs to be a nice rhythmic walk and as we're walking along, I'm going to start with some counter bends. Try here, he's real stiff in the, the neck and the shoulder or has a tendency. When I pick up the rein, like if I were to pick up to the inside, with the green horses, the young horses, as soon as you pick up to the inside, they just follow their nose and they'll go along with it. So the reason I start with flexing to the outside is the rail helps with that. So I'm walking along. Can he figure out just because his nose is flexed one way that he doesn't have to follow the nose? That he can, he can flex his head and neck and still move forward. And now I'll cut across the arena here and see if we can hold it. So I want to get a few flexions or I want to get a few strides in flexion and then once he's holding it then I'm going to allow him to straighten out. So you don't want to just hold them in there for a long time. I want him to straighten out and I also would like for him to lengthen and stretch down. So I give him a few strides of that and then I'm just going to pick it up and do it again. So I lift with my outside rein, the rein closest to the rail, asking him to flex. This is nice. And as soon as he holds that for a bit, then I allow him to straighten out and then can I lengthen him. See, he wants to already fall to the inside, so I shift my weight to the outside and ask him just to kind of come back to the rail. I'll pick up, flex them to the rail again, and these are counter bands. Actually did a pretty nice turn in a counter band. That's actually a more difficult thing to do. He's a little worried about something over there, so that actually helped me. And then I allow him to lengthen and go straight ahead. And then I can change direction. And I'll do a counter bend going this way now. So you can use the rail as I'm going this way here. I pick up, I flex, and it doesn't have to be far. If you do 20 to 30 degrees in the beginning is fine. Again, it's more about the quality of the band than it is the quantity of the band. So as he bends his neck, do I have a nice arc there? And that's pretty good, so I'll let him have that. Or is he kinking or flexing or tipping his nose too much one way or the other? A lot of horses, they, they do what I call hinging. 
is certain parts of the neck they'll flex and the other parts of the neck they won't. So you will really want to watch for that as you're doing this. And Tri's doing this pretty well. We've done this just a couple days. So I'm lifting with my outside rein saying can you flex and can you keep the walk going. Again it doesn't have to be a fast walk it just needs to stay rhythmic is what I'm really looking for and then I allow them to straight, straighten and then move on forward. So now we've flexed to the rail, we've done some counter bends. Can we do some correct bends? Can I flex them to the inside? And this here I'm going to have to use my weight to help him. So I want to shift my weight slightly away from the direction he bends. So that was good. And then I'm going to allow him to lengthen. And that was nice. So he lengthens down. And then I'm going to pick him back up. I'm going to shorten my reins. Lift him up a little bit. Get him nice and straight. And then I'm going to flex to the inside. So I tip his nose to the inside. I shift my weight slightly to the outside if his shoulders drop in. And this is nice. As soon as he's bent and I can keep my, and I don't need to hold my hand up, I can drop it back down. If I want to keep him bent, I'll just keep my reins short. And that's pretty nice. I'm actually holding it in for quite a while there. And you don't, don't necessarily need to do that in the beginning. Actually, it's not a good thing to do in the beginning until your horse can handle it. And then I allow him to lengthen. So you're constantly bringing them up, kind of shifting their weight back. You're flexing them, which helps to get them over their shoulders. And then you're allowing to lengthen out again. So you're not keeping them in any one position for very long. So it causes them to find a balance point to where they'll be able to flex left and right, lengthen and come up, and they, they stay balanced. They're good within that spot of flexing back and forth. The head and neck is what they use, a huge part of what they use to balance themselves. So we're just helping them to be more, to have more dexterity. So again, I'm gonna pick up, flex them to the inside. He wants to fall in with the shoulders. So I shift my weight out slightly, and I might even bring both reins out as I keep them bent. And then I'm going to let them lengthen. Another variation of it is as he's bent, his head's bent to the inside, I can allow him to lengthen on the circle. So the, bent, the amount of bend that I have, that's the size circle that I'll allow him to lengthen out. So that's a variation. And then I can pick him back up. So I'll show you that again. I get them straight and light. Now I'm going to pick up and flex them to the inside by lifting my hand. Ideally he's getting a soft jaw, he's activating the jaw. There, he's nice and soft and light in my hand. And once he can hold himself there, I'm going to allow him to lengthen and do a small circle. Letting him stretch down. And not all horses are going to take that invitation and want to stretch down. But as you develop them, as you do more and more of this, if you hold them up longer and do the flexions, then and you keep offering, eventually they're going to go, oh yeah, I'd love to go down there. I'd love to stretch out. See, and tries getting that. He's going, oh, okay, that feels good down there. And now we'll change direction and we'll do the other side. So we're just doing our bends. We did our counter bends and now we're doing some bends to the inside. So I 
Get him straight and light first, then I pick up and flex. This side he really wants to fall to the inside, so I have to shift my weight out to say, no, keep your shoulder out there. Because as soon as his nose goes in, his shoulders fall in too. And I'm like, nope, stay up above your shoulders. This is good. He's softening my hands here. He's licking and chewing, so I'm going to allow him to circle and lengthen. This is a huge piece of just getting the balance and the suppling by doing this here. So again, I pick up, I flex, he falls in, I shift my weight back to the rail. I shift my weight, I come on, I bring my hands slightly to the rail, but keeping him bent this way, and it's not like I'm pulling him over there, I just say, hey, would you like to follow that? And as soon as he does, I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. I soften a little bit without throwing it away. The third thing is, is I come on with just a little bit of leg to say, move over that way. Now, if, if the horse doesn't follow that suggestion and you feel like you're really having to force it, then go back to your counter bends. Use the rail to help you. The horse isn't ready yet to not have the support of the rail. So you shouldn't have to really force it. You know, you, you'll have to give some suggestions here and there, but if you're really forcing it, do your counter bends. So we're going along in a correct bend. He's wanting to fall off the rail. Now he's lost his forward, so I'm saying keep the walk, because that's the other part of this. He needs, he needs to keep the walk rhythm, and that's nice, so I'm going to allow him to lengthen. So this is doing the bends and counter bends on the rail. You also want to be able to do this on the circle. So if I walk a circle here, I'm going to pick him up, get him straight and light on the circle by kind of just lifting up and then keep the walk going. And now I'm going to flex him to the inside. Keeping him out on that circle. He's holding it there. He's actually giving a nice lick and chew with his jaw. And then I'm going to allow him to lengthen. His biggest thing there is he kind of was just getting a little slower and a little slower in his forward. So I allow him to lengthen down. And then I pick him back up. And I can choose to either go to the inside or to the outside. So I'm going to do a counter bend here now. Flexing him to the outside on the circle. So this is a little more difficult because he's walking this way and his head's bent that way. So I do a few strides and then I allow him to Lengthen back out again. And then I can pick him up and flex him to the inside. My weight is the, hu is the big piece of keeping them on the line of travel. So I can use my weight first, then I can use some of my reins and my legs to help them. Keeping him flexed, he's holding that pretty nice, and then I allow him to lengthen and stretch down. So I'm liking this. He's getting softer and softer, and I, this is the third day of doing this with him, of flexing to the inside and to the outside. Most of it's been to the outside and we've just been starting on a little bit to the inside so I'm really happy with how he's coming along, how he's progressing. So a recap on this is your bends 
are to the inside, your counter bends are to the outside. Work on your counter bends first down the rail. Then you can start playing around with some bends to the inside. And if you're having trouble with your bends to the inside and you're really, the horse really isn't getting it, keep doing your counter bends on the rail. And then come back to the bends to the inside. If you're still having some issue with the bends to the inside, come to a circle and try it on a circle. Because what's going to happen is if you're on the circle and you bend, they'll just start making a little smaller circle. Which then you just say, no, you got to keep going. It helps you, you know, they'll make, they might even spiral down to a really small circle. But just kind of keep them moving until you can drift them back out. That's another way to help them bending to the inside. So you've got the bend to the inside and to the outside. You want to do that on the rail and then on your circle. So where you can flex to the inside and to the outside. Why do we want to do this? We want to do this because it helps to balance them. You have the front and back balance and you have the left and right balance. Particular, most of what this does is a little bit of front to back balance but it's mostly left to right balance of getting the horse off one shoulder or the other, keeping them upright as they're walking along. In the next video, we'll show how to do this at the trot and how it progresses on and eventually you can do it at the canter. So really think about flexing and it doesn't have to be a big flexion 20 degrees, but make sure it's a correct flexion in the horse's neck. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.